Today's adventure begins by looking at I-4 westbound as the recording of this Monday, March 25th, 2024. It is almost 7 p.m., 6.50 to be precise. A little overcast, some what's left of the sun before it sets is gleaming very beautifully through the clouds. I am heading to Magic Kingdom with no real rhyme or reason. I just felt like going to the parks, braving the Easter week crowds. I was looking at the wait times earlier and they were very lengthy. So I might not be getting on anything, but we'll see what happens after fireworks. Nighttime at Magic Kingdom is about to begin. It's kind of interesting. Last week I was looking at some of the wait times that really didn't pop into the park too much last week. Well, when I was on the My Disney Experience app, the wait times were really extremely low for the end of spring break. But now, with Easter in six days, it's back to being very busy. Ooh, that is beautiful right there with the sun beaming through there. It is precisely seven o'clock takes a little while to get from transportation ticket center which i am ttc over to mk so i'm not in any rush 8 30 is when happily ever after happens i check the app and just to see also i opted to walk not take the tram welcome everyone adam the woo here got my magic band did not need to book a reservation because after two on a weekday at all four parks do not need to go in the My Disney Experience app and book a reservation as an annual pass holder. So today, because I'm filming this, is on Monday after 2 p.m. You just walk right in. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? And to be a little more specific, I should say, well, as I'm checking the wait times here, Space Mountain 65, you know it's busy when 60-minute wait for Barnstormer. 40 minute, Barnstormer's got a longer line than Dumbo. Little Mermaid's 45, 105, the Mine Train, 90, for Peter Pan's Flight, 55 to see Hatbox Ghost, and 80 for Big Thunder Mountain. Man, I love that sky. But yeah, any day of the week after two, except Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom on the weekends, I got that, that weird thing where you still gotta book a reservation, but I should probably be a little more specific with that explanation. Ah, WDWAP life. I love it. Looks like about 30 more minutes, 30, 40 more minutes till the sun officially sets. 73 degrees. And at 9 p.m., 69 degrees, 68 degrees at 10. And I am going to try to stay till close at 11 and just see what the wait times are like. Even on a very busy holiday week, it's going to be 67 degrees. It is nice and breezy and it feels great out. Yeah, nice, nice breeze out here. There goes. You know the rest. All right, let's take a look at the one-day tickets right now. So if I was walking up, well, obviously I'd probably get here earlier. If I was a guest, I wouldn't get here this late in the day. 179. If you want to add the park hopper on, it'd be 244. So 179 with no park hopper. If you're just doing MK, if you want to hop over to the other ones. 244. 100. $79. This week's pricing. I have never in my life noticed that there were water fountains up here. So that's Resort Monorail right over there. And I am on the other side of the platform. I never knew there were water fountains over here. And looking at them, they all, they're all they pretty archaic. They almost might have been ones that were here probably since close to opening day, if not when this thing first started running. Also, I can recall when you used to be able to sit in the front of this, but you're not allowed to request the front anymore. I, that ended a long time ago. Monorail pink. And even though there's a lot of people 
leaving, there's a lot of people heading in too. Yeah, that took a little over 20 minutes. Pulling in the parking lot, walking, getting on the monorail, getting over here. Of course I did, I was taking my time, I wasn't in a rush. One thing I wanna try, since I'm here at this time, usually I'm here during the day and I try to get out of here before the fireworks happen, but now I'm gonna be switching it around. That's kind of an interesting hue color coming off, bouncing off with that behind me. But I wanna see if I can watch the fireworks from the top of the treehouse, the Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. See if that's a possibility. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. And last, I was here a few weeks ago, I asked a cast member, and they said, oh yeah, you can go up there. It's just not really something that they heavily promote. So it would be kind of neat if I could watch Happily Ever After from the top of the treehouse. It'd be kind of a neat thing. I purposely did not get Joffrey because I wanted, wanted to wait for a very large, oversized cup of Starbucks. You know, I've never took the time to stand here and look underneath the awning of the Main Street Theater, which is now a gift shop, with all the nice little bulbs that are going on over there. Yeah, I do love Joffrey's coffee. I think I prefer it to Starbucks, but the size portions aren't that big. All right, accomplished. You gotta have a little patience. It took probably about 15 minutes to get just a regular drip coffee, but uh, adjacent to the Starbucks is this place, which is a, has the crystal stuff here on Main Street. Very beautiful, beautiful stuff from glass blowing, from seven dwarfs, little figurines right here. It's so cool. Take a look at this. I didn't believe this was in here before. If I did, I had forgotten. Sometimes I'm in such a rush to, to do the things I normally do that I don't look at the, the little things. Oh yeah, look at that, it's the front of the castle there. How cool is that? I don't believe that's for sale. Also, you can peek into where Starbucks is. They have a rope up there now where you can't go from point A to point B. You gotta go back onto Main Street, get your coffee, then come over here. It looks like George Washington's head up there. And there is a U.S. flag in here also. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is just get myself a piping hot caffeinated beverage and just walk around places. And when you get a nice hot coffee, even late in the eve, and walk around the parks, it is so, it's just one of my favorite things. I'm gonna see if I can get myself a good spot up in a tree house somewhere. And I'm also curious to see what the wait times are gonna be like after the fireworks, like another 30 minutes, an hour. Oh, I've got some bubbles, we've got some people coming by with a little bubble maker. I'm kinda, kinda curious to see what the wait times are gonna be like after the mass exodus. Bubble alert, bubble alert. More, more water fountains. Those, I, those I've seen before, but yeah, the other ones. Uh, castle looks all beautiful, all illuminated. Okay, this is interesting. They have put up, we are ride testing only open this summer for the, the new attraction you're taking over for Splash Mountain. That was not here the other day when I was here, those, that sign. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty, pretty, I don't wanna say shocked, but I'm really surprised how quickly they are moving along to get a summer opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I'm, I, I'm pretty excited about riding. I mean, I love Splash, but I also love Princess and the Frog, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, look, that's where the flume drops. It's the same logs they had on Splash, but right up in there. And from what I have heard, I think it's even been confirmed, Dr. Facilier will not be up there at the drop. If he is, it's gonna shock everyone. In fact, I don't even think Dr. Facilier is even gonna be on the attraction, which I think is, I think it's a missed opportunity, but you know, I figured he'd be up there singing Friends on the other side as you're dropping in, but Let's we'll see what happens. It's also a really good time to get on attractions and rides when the fireworks are happening. But I'm kind of curious to see. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just want to see what happens after the fireworks are done. If people leave or if they stick around. All right, I started walking in at about 8.20, about 8.18, 8.19, 8.20ish. 10 minutes or so, 10 or 11 minutes prior, before the fireworks and nighttime spectacular is about to start. And there is no one in here i think i saw one other group walk in a couple minutes before me but i am walking basically through a completely empty tree house a couple of people are walking up now either they have the same idea i do or maybe they're just taking taking advantage of the the low the low weight oh yeah there's a few people up here a couple people down there a couple people over here not, not a bad view kind of obscured by the tree line but Pretty nice. Yeah, I guess you could pretty much call this the ultimate jungle lookout. In this compound, we often pause to contemplate our small world. All right, even though this is definitely a good bird's eye perspective up of the top, and there's probably only maybe a dozen people total up in the treehouse at this time, 
You really can't see all of it obscured by the trees. You have a really good view of the castle, which is just really, really good, but also Main Street, knowing that there is just like no elbow room at all on Main Street. It is kind of nice if you just happen to be over in this area to walk up here and get the view, even though I will say it probably is a little bit better to either be on Autopia, which would be the Tomorrow or Autopia East, the Tomorrowland Raceway. You get the view from there, or if you could time it right on Big Thunder Mountain, I think those are my two preferred spots. But it was kind of neat to stand up on top of the treehouse and get the view. You can kind of like walk over to other areas too, get a little better view of the actual main blasts that are happening up way behind the castle, but the best view is right up on the castle. I was also noticing that Tinkerbell did not fly tonight, probably because it was a little too windy, but right when she said, right when the, the, the line says, I'll have the courage to fly, usually Tinkerbell flies by, and I have zoomed in on the castle, and alas, no Tinkerbell, because I think it was just a little too windy. It was like some, definitely some real kind of high gusty wind, so didn't didn't happen, didn't happen from this angle. And I wouldn't say this is probably the best spot to watch the fireworks, but definitely is a very unique perspective. All right, let's start on some short wait times. 10 minutes, 10 minute wait for pirates. Yeah, don't mind if I do. A lot of people leave it after the fireworks. A lot of people haven't got from Main Street over here in time. So I'm gonna jump right in here for a little walk on. All right, I think I'm gonna have my own row, row six. I might get wet. Maybe I'll get wet. <laughs> the guy in front of me is very excited. A little bit of a shipwreck going on over here as well. There, this is uh, the beach where everyone is washed up on shore. There's even a little crab right there and a seagull on the top of... Look at this gentleman. a little seagull on top of that gentleman's head right there. free to utilize the little shooting arcade over here now. like over here by myself for a very very short while there was like hardly anybody over here with me and then all of a sudden just like an onslaught of people that came up i guess they realized holy cow there's something going on over here i was just pretty excited i had it all to myself for a few minutes and now it's like completely full of people over here utilizing the utilizing everything it's so awesome that they made this for free now you don't have to put quarters in anymore so you can do all day if you wanted to show up here all day and just you know go after the vultures over here Look, there's little gophers. There's a gopher right there, and a gopher right there. There they are, look at that. There's a shovel over there, nailed the shovel. No quarters needed. The lighting is really good too. There's a little lantern right here. It's not a real lantern, it's a light, but I got some pretty good lighting on my face right here. Uh, you know, once you, you just you have admission to get out here, a pass holder, you can spend all night in here. No one's going to tell you to put a quarter in. Getting a nice little view here about, around the back side of the castle right there where the fireworks were all happening a little bit ago. Now over here as you're going into Storybook Circus, so you have the one banner there. There's usually another banner right here, but the banner is gone. I swear there's like usually another banner right there. I'm gonna go see what Barnstormer is now, wait time long. I was thinking maybe it'd be a walk-on for Barnstormer, but still was about a 20 minute wait. Now earlier when I was home, I was noticing this afternoon, it was a 60 minute, a one hour wait for Barnstormer. Imagine waiting an hour for a, what, a 70 second ride? I mean, I've done it before, but I'm just, just saying, can you, can you just imagine not knowing how long that, that was it. That was like what the people that just, that just waited, they waited 20 minutes. It's better when it's a walk-on. I mean, it's a fun one, but I would wait an hour for this. Oh, I keep forgetting, and this pathway is open over here now where you can go over through Storybook Circus and head over towards Tron Light Cycle Run. You can go underneath the bottom of it right over there. So it's kind of neat to see this angle. 
Still no walk up for this now. It's all still virtual queue at Lightning Lane, but. Oh, yeah. This really is a wonderful, perfect night weather-wise to just be walking around the parks. And I'm about to walk from where I just was over, well, I guess technically I am in Tomorrowland, through that little exit of Tomorrowland. And gonna go see what the people mover is looking like. Always a nice little after dark ride of the people mover. Always is pleasant. Now Astro Orbiter has a little bit of a line, but take a look at this. There's about five people, well, let's say eight people in line going up the escalator to people mover. I will take, well, walking, not an escalator, walking platform, if you will. I can handle that. Nice little view of Space, space Mountain. Over there, the doors are now about to close. Hey. The TTA Blue Line non-stop service around Tomorrowland. That's what the narrator just said. That's how I know it's the Blue Line. Not just the TTA, but also the TTA Blue Line. Please do not take flight while on board. Not a bad way to spend the evening. Just went past the queue line of Tomorrowland Raceway. Looked like it was pretty much a walk on, like maybe a five minute wait. Not bad, not bad. Boy, this weather is so nice. I keep reiterating that. The weather's so nice, breeze, nice cool, cool breeze in the, in the face. It is now exactly one hour till the park closes. It is 10 p.m. Park closes at 11. I don't know if the park stays open until midnight anymore, but during the holidays, even you know, holiday week with Easter, Coming up this Sunday, open till 11, I believe, this week, every night. I was open for a 13 minute, but it is 15. 13 usually means there's, there's no wait whatsoever. Yeah, they don't even have the external, the external queues not even open. This is gonna be like a five minute wait. Not open for visitation. <laughs> Now, ended up having a pretty good ride on there. Got to see Hatbox for a minute, and towards the very, very, very end of the, also trying to see if I could see the Candleman in the attic, but the Candleman is very difficult to see. It's like kind of the dude buggy is moving very, very quick. But then when I got to the last scene, I was stuck in the last scene for probably a good. 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes on the last little section, right? Like literally probably 10 yards away from getting off. I thought maybe it was gonna get evac. I thought, what if this thing gets evac and I've already gone through the entire ride and I'm here at the last of the scene, but it did not get evac, but it was pretty dang close. We were stuck on there a while and the cast members were walking up and down besides the doom buggies with their flashlights. Then the thing started running again. But now I'm back outside looking at the, looking at the little berm here with the, the pets at the, Pets up on the top of the pet cemetery. And now I'm looking back at the mansion. I got a few more minutes. I think maybe I can run over to Big Thunder and knock that out real quick before 11. All right, change of plans. I'm gonna go and see exactly how long it is to get on Peter Pan's flight. And maybe, because it says a half hour for Big Thunder, which I think is probably a little overinflated. It also says a half hour for Peter Pan's flight. Yeah, I'm gonna guess it's probably less than that. If, it, if it's not, I won't get in line, but if it is, I'll get in line. Yeah, Small World is basically a complete walk-on. There is no one in line over there at Small World. Let me, let me see how long this is gonna be. Now, it says a half hour. It is 10.40 right now. I'll give it, I'll give it a try and see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's probably less than that, though. Yeah, this isn't too bad at all. Let me do the little uh, little ringing of the bells here. Let me uh, ring the bell. Ring that, ring that bell. Yeah, but take a look. There's like no one in line past where I'm standing. In front of me there is, but back in here, usually this is completely full and then another 30 minutes past. That. It's only been about six or seven minutes till I got to this point here that has the little like tree area of the queue line. So it's gonna be about a total of 10 total minutes before getting on Peter Pan's flight. Kind of glad I opted to do this instead of probably going over to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I've done Big Thunder so many times. And uh, you continue, it's definitely one of my favorite rides, but you don't really get to go on Peter Pan's flight too much because usually it's less, never less than like a 45 minute to an hour wait. 
So pretty thankful that I was able to just kind of walk right on with no more than a 10 minute wait. Even though this will be the last official ride of the night, last official ride attraction of the night, the ride, the night for me, and a good way to top off a, a pretty much a, a perfect evening post fireworks here at Magic Kingdom. You know, it doesn't get much better than that, weather wise and wait time wise. Ended up being really, really awesome. Had a good time. Glad I, glad I, glad I cruised over, braved the original crowds, and then as it thinned out post fireworks, awesome. Well, well worthy coming in here late at night. Pop it in real quick, like. It is now 10.56. I'm not gonna try to run over to another attraction. I think I'm just gonna start heading out. It is time to go home. Again, not a bad way to spend an evening. I'm gonna walk right down the middle of Main Street, USA. All right, the monorail and the ferry boat at closing is really, really long. It's like, Transportation Ticket Center parking here at the bus directi directory, number 34. It's almost like mass exodus number two. It's almost just as bad as post fireworks. Probably should have left uh, about 10.30 instead of trying to wait until 11. Yeah, this stretches all the way back to the front entrance of the park. Probably a good half hour wait to get to this point before you can get on this. So I'm gonna try something different and not take the monorail or the ferry across. Maybe I'll try the bus. Maybe I'm making the wrong decision, but eh, why not? Okay, I gotta go all the way down to end, the end here for number 34. This is 28, almost all the way over to the Contemporary. Not quite, but... One day they might build a sidewalk that goes all the way over to TTC. There is one. You can take it around Bay Lake, but right now it's down for construction the poly. Can't take it the full loop around. Goodness gracious, this is all the way to the end. Probably should have just walked to Contemporary took the monorail from there. Alright, there's nothing written up on the sign. There's nothing written up on the sign. Is this it? Maybe? I don't know. Are these the ones? Alright, thank you. Yeah, this is TTC. <laughs> This is different, holy crap, what the heck? This is like a full on right? This is like an airport bus show. Huh. There's no one on this, there's like five people on this whole thing. I'm either going to the airport or going to Transportation Ticket Center. It's not even a Disney bus, it's like a totally different, it's not a Disney themed bus like the other ones are. Weird. Alright, that was very, very quick. That was like maybe a three minute ride. This is like a game changer when exiting the park. I don't know if they utilize these buses prior to closing, maybe post fireworks they don't, or maybe if it's just a at 11 o'clock type thing, but they're just pulling right through this gate. Look at this gate opens up. I mean, this was like no more than three to five minutes. I probably wouldn't have moved 10 feet in the line for the monorail or the ferry boat by this point. Game changer, this might be my exit strategy from now on when I leave a Magic Kingdom and close or maybe checking for post fireworks because the closing crowd is just as bad as the post fireworks crowd exiting MK. There's the monorail station right there. Dang, this was awesome. It's also interesting, when I got to number 34, there was no signage. It was when I walked in, but if you wouldn't have known, you would never know this was going to TTC if you had missed that first signage. Transportation Ticket Center. Sweet. New experiences. Hey, I just asked, said that they run these from seven to one every night. There's also the old school ones right here, the regular style ones. But I just rode in style. Sweet. Game changer. Look at this. Good night. Thank you. New experiences. That was awesome. Man, that was like five minutes. Five minutes. 
Awesome. That's going to do it for today. From Magic Kingdom, a nice night, nice exit strategy. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. My thumb, is my, my thumb giving a big thumbs up to myself down there in the, the shadow, let's say my shadow. You know what I mean. Vlog is over.